This is it, the Snapton SP650 drone. This is only the second drone I've ever owned. My first was the Simrex 300C. It's a mini drone. This one is a little bit larger. It's still an entry level drone. This has a 1080p video camera. The camera can also be tilted or adjusted. It's manual adjustment, so you have to adjust before you take off. But let's, uh, let's start with a quick overview of what's in the box, and then I'll get right into how to set the drone up so it'll fly properly and show you how well it's working. I'm a novice at this, and that probably is good, so you can see what you might expect to encounter if you choose to purchase this drone. Nice looking box if you're gifting it. Very impressed with how it was packed. I pre-looked at this, but I packed it back up. This simply comes off. You can uh, get a free 12 month warranty. They really want you to do that. They put two cards in there. And now let's see what's inside the box. What first attracted me to this drone was its appearance. To me, it looks well-crafted, well-designed, aerodynamic, futuristic, and I love the black and gold colors. So that you're aware, you do get two batteries. One's already inside, but you will need to take it out and charge it. Second one is in the pack. Another bonus, two charging cables, so you can charge them at the same time. Blade protectors, your landing gear that you'll need to assemble your controller, extra set of blades, a uh, cell phone holder. I've gone through the owner's manual. It is easy to read. It's easy to understand. I think it's going to make it much easier than my first drone. There's a uh, scanning code where you can scan and upload the app for your smartphone, either for a the uh, iPhone or an Android. You can also do it online. And then I have not even started the instructions for operating it from a smart uh, from a smartphone. That'll be another segment. The other thing that is nice, because my videos have been seen worldwide, which I'm very thankful for, it is amazing how small the world has become. The instructions are in English, French, or Spanish. All that being seen and said, let me get the batteries charged and do the first test flight. As far as the landing gear, they just slip into place. That was very easy. Same thing with the blade protectors. There's a couple little pegs, a couple little holes, and they just slide right in there. Included in the kit were two packets of screws and a small magnetized screwdriver and after you attach the blade protectors there's a screw that goes in each one to hold it in place. How to identify which screws hold the blade guards on is by a little picture that's in with the screws and it clearly shows the blade guard and again these are slightly smaller than what holds on the landing gear. The landing gear packet also has a small picture identifying it. It was a little harder to see, for me anyway, and when I was done there was just one spare screw, so be careful. Do it on top of something I did on top of my green screen, and that's why I'm leaving the green screen on for this shot. So make sure you get those in the right place. So you do that on all four blade guards, and you will do the same thing for each one of the landing gear. An important heads up on the blade guards. There's a screw already in the underside. That is not what attaches it to hold it in place. It's on the top and you actually insert the screw into that. So don't misunderstand and think that you just need to tighten the screw that's already in place. That is the motor mount screw. So that's my most important hit. Make sure you use the right screws for attaching the blade guards and the landing gear. I had mentioned earlier that I own the Simrex 300C 
and it's a mini drone. You can see the difference in size. The Shapton SP650 is about 12 inches across, blade tip to blade tip. I just wanted to compare that so you know if you've watched my videos on the Simrex that uh, I'm moving up just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and install the battery. If there's anything that there's a weakness, it's here because it's a little tricky to get this door closed and get it secure. And to me, this is if there's anything that's a little, could be a little better, it's this little cover. I mean, it's on, it just feels like it could pop open fairly easily, but that's, that's a minor thing. Okay, so the battery is in. I've put four AA batteries in my remote. Now you need to pair the drone and the remote together. First step is to turn on the drone. So we're going to go to our power switch, turn it on, and you're going to get flashing LEDs. Now you've got pulsing LEDs. Next is to have the remote and the camera has got to be facing away from you because that's the front of the drone. So I move this back a little bit so you can see. Flat surface facing away from you. You don't have to be this close to the drone, but you do have to be directly behind it. We're going to push the power button on the remote. So now they're both flashing. You'll take the remote, uh, the, the left joystick, and you're going to push it forward until it beeps, then push it back. And now all the lights are solid. Now we need to calibrate, and that's simply take both joysticks down and to the right and hold two to three seconds. You get a tone, flash of lights, that's done. Now you're ready for flight. Now if I were actually had the drone on the floor, I could uh, take off by simply pulling down and out both joysticks. That will start the motors, but it won't launch. So let me move to the floor and uh, we'll take off and I'll do a little bit of flying. Then calibration is down and to the right. That's complete. Now you can either push this button one time to start the blades. I prefer just to pull these apart and down. Okay, that has my blades running. Now this will uh, launch up but just a little bit. Now we need to, well actually it's flying pretty straight. So you hold these down for about two seconds and it'll correct that. Now mine is pretty balanced but it's important that you do this indoors so there's no wind whatsoever. Well, I was hoping I would need to do some correction, so I'll, I will just show that on the screen here in a little bit. You're always going to get a little bit of drift that you can see bringing it back towards me, forwards, left, right. But if I lose orientation, like if I were to cut like this and go back, it can get very dis disorienting. So that's where the headless mode can be very handy because then when I push forward, regardless of the direction the drone is, it will go forward. So I need a little more practice before I do that. I just wanted to show you the flight. And um, actually, if you're interested, I've created this little green screen studio and I'm going to do a video on how I made it. I did not spend a lot of money. so. Keep an eye open for that video that I'll be producing shortly. And I can't really do any flips in here because there's not enough space, so I won't do that. But it is maintaining, hovering pretty well. 
I've got a little wind in here from an, uh, my air conditioner blows a little bit in here and it's pretty warm today so it is running but all in all pretty good in future videos I will also show the camera and how to record with that but I just want to give some basic information and show the drone flying and spin around I was hoping to let it fly until it the battery runs down. I've been messing with it a little bit. Basically what will happen is all the lights will start flashing and then that lets you know you have, I'm not sure how long, but you have several seconds to get back. I'm also wondering if when I turn the power, if I were to lose power or get away too far, if I lost power, I'm going to shut power off and see if it goes to a safe land. And yes, it did go to a safe land, but I don't think it's on camera. So let me uh, turn the camera and you can see. So if you do lose power or you get out of range, it will start flashing and then it'll come down to a safe landing and continue flashing, which is nice because it'll help you find the drone. Before we get too far along, let's go ahead and take a look at the camera. Here's that little tab I was telling you about that needs to be removed. And then the camera, to move you just take a fingernail or fingertip and you can tilt that down. I don't know if you can see very well. Let's see. So I can tilt it so it's almost, yeah that would be straight down so straight down at the ground and then any amount in between and you just move that with your hand. You have to decide before you take off where you want it. Then the other thing that you will need is a microchip you, you can record your video in the camera and I think that's a plus as opposed to always recording it from my phone. I had difficulty getting it from my phone any place else whereas this little microchip will make that much easier. You will need to purchase a micro card and uh, the one I have, this is just one that I had. It happens to be a Samsung. Normally I get the sand disk. This is an adapter that this will go in so you can put it in the computer easier. But if you look real close you'll you'll take the drone you're going to turn it upside down opposite end of the camera and I don't know if I can show this very well or not there is a little drawing right there a little etching that shows how this goes in and it shows the little notch but the card where you can see what brand it is will be facing down when you turn it, uh, the drone right side up again. Okay, there it's in the slot. And now you're just going to slide it in until it clicks. And now it's locked in there. Same as any other micro SD card. It's just that real faint cutout shows you the way that it goes in. Once you have that done, you're ready for pictures or video. Now let's talk about the controller. I've already attached the cell phone holder. However, I'm videotaping with my cell phone, so I cannot put it in here. The cell phone holder works very well. I've got an iPhone 6S, I believe, with a protective case on it, and it holds it very secure. The joysticks, I'll call them, are very fluid. I like how they feel. Let's go through each one of these one at a time. The emblem up and down arrow pretty simple. One push to start your motors and once you're up and elevated and flying one push will have a safe landing or a soft landing. The other way that you can start your uh, propeller spinning is take the two joysticks out and down and then release and the propellers at, when you're in that position will start up, then you release it, and then to actually raise up off the ground, then you push the joystick straight up. I prefer this starting over this button, but it's two ways that you can do it. Next is your uh, video and photo taking button. That's at the top. To take a photo, it's just a short press. To take video, 
it's a long press. The button on the right shows uh, like the drone itself it looks like. On a short press the drone will rotate relatively quickly. A long press it'll do a long circular pattern as long as you hold that button down it'll continue in that circular pattern. Then the lowest button is both the headless mode and that's a one push or for the drone to return to you push and hold down and the drone will return to your location. Release it once it arrives and then you can do a safe landing. The headless mode, the advantage to headless mode, which is again just the one push and if you want to cancel it just push again then you go to the uh, regular controls. In normal mode your controllers for forward, reverse, right, left are based on the camera side of the drone so it will fly that way. If during flight you get disoriented, you look away and you lose what is the front or back, right, left of the drone itself, you can totally get confused on control. If you use the headless mode, regardless of which way the drone is facing, forward will always move the drone away from you regardless of its positioning, back would bring it towards you regardless of its positioning, and same thing with right and left. It doesn't matter which way the camera is facing, the drone will go right when you do right, left when you do left, forward and back regardless of its position. So if you've done a spin move and you don't know the orientation of the drone, the headless mode will help you recover and get back. And in reality, I think outdoor flying, it's probably the best way to go is to use the headless. Again, one push activates it. If you want to shut it off, one more push and you're back to the original. Let's talk about the two buttons that are on top of your remote. The one on the left controls speed. It's referred to as speed, really it's tilt. Anytime you remove the battery and put it back in the drone, it's going to go to its default settings. The default setting is the slowest speed. That's uh, what you would use all the time for indoor flight. So what the speeds do is it increases the tilt and that way it can fly more in the wind. So obviously if you're outdoors and you have any breeze at all you will end up wanting the the highest speed which in reality is the greatest tilt. And that's whether you're banking left, right, back or forward. So that's what the speeds are for. Default is the slowest. There's two additional. I'll show that when we get into flying. The button on the top right and it's marked 3D flip. You can do e any direction you want. What you'll do is you'll hold the button down and then push forward. You'll get a forward roll. Hold the button down to the right. You'll roll to the right. Obviously the left or back. It'll give you the backwards roll or flip, however you want to refer to it. There is a warning. You need to be at least two meters or to be safe, seven feet off the ground because you've got to have room for that for the drone to actually do its flip. So uh, seven feet or two meters, whichever you prefer. This was interesting. When I went to charge the battery, it does only go in one way, but when I pushed it in, when I came back, I thought this was where it plugged in and I was having a heck of a time separating it. I thought it was stuck together. I thought it overheated but just realize it's the small part is where you pull to unplug. So that was just me. And here's one of the adapter plugs. That's what I've used to charge mine as opposed to plugging the USB into a computer. I can charge it on a wall socket. It took about 30 minutes for uh, them to charge. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of the SP650 drone. I'll be making more videos on it as I get more experience and I learn more about it. So maybe hit subscribe on the bottom right of the screen, off screen, bottom right. I would appreciate it as any producer that makes YouTube videos would. So thanks for that. And uh, remember Boiler Dan 1, where I know a little bit about everything and a whole lot about nothing. Thanks for watching.